The H1B guy here, and today, H1B denial rates for Q4 fiscal year 2020, reviewing initial and continuing employment data for H1B visas. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention the H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues in the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. If I can help you, please reach out. I'd love to hear how. Today's post is brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads since 2001. As I previously promised, I wanted to take a look at the January 2021 NFAP policy brief titled H-1B Denial Rates for Fiscal Year 2020 and the Impact of Court Decisions. NFAAP takes their data directly from the H-1B Employer Data Hub and makes it easy for a regular guy like me to understand. As I've previously pointed out, their emphasis is on initial employment denials versus continuing employment denials. I personally think continuing employment data tells us a much bigger picture. Remember, initial employment equals new employment, i.e. a new H-1B visa. Continuing employment equals extensions, amendments, or change of employer for previously approved H-1B visas. So let's start with the data on H-1B denials for initial employment for Q4 fiscal year 2020, which was 1.5%. Total denials for initial employment was 13% overall for all of fiscal year 2020, down 8% from fiscal year 2019, and down 12% from fiscal year 2018. Fiscal year 2018 was an all-time high of initial employment denials of 24%. H-1B denials for continuing employment for fiscal year 2020 was 7% for the entire fiscal year, down by 5% from fiscal year 2019, which was 12% overall. Quoting the briefing, for reasons not explained on the H-1B Employer Data Hub website, USCIS did not make available data for H-1B petitions for continuing employment for the second or third quarters of fiscal year 2020. That means it was not possible for NFAP to distinguish denial rates by quarter for continuing cases. Very interesting that that data wasn't available. I think a lot of that has to do with most likely receiving lower petition numbers in Q2 and Q3, which would coincide with the date we talk about a lot, that March 15th, 2020 uh, date when you know everything really changed due to COVID. So let's cover top 10 employers for initial employment for all fiscal year 2020. Number one on the list, Amazon. Number two, Emphasis. Number three, TCS. Number four, Cognizant. Number five, Microsoft. Number six, Google. Number seven, Capgemini. Number eight, HCL America. Number nine, IBM. Number 10, Deloitte. And an honorable mention at number 11 was Facebook. And again, those were the top 10 for initial employment for new H-1B visas. Uh, the top of the list, Amazon had 4,774 initial H-1B employment visas. Moving on to top 10 employers for continuing employment for fiscal year 2021, or excuse me, fiscal year 2020. Uh, number one, Cognizant. Number two, Amazon. Number three, Emphasis. Number four, TCS. Number five, Deloitte. Number six, Microsoft. Number seven, Google. Number eight, Capgemini number nine, Facebook, and number 10, Accenture. 
And honorable mention for number 11 was Apple. Now, the number one slot employer for continuing employment was Cognizant. And that number was 12,873 continuing employment H-1B visas. So wrapping up, the policy brief talks about the lottery and goes over you know, 275,000 received for 85,000 uh, visas that were allocated for last year. Uh, basically 190,000 um, discrepancy there. But it does say, quote, as expected in 2020, uncertain economic conditions caused a number of employers to decide not to submit full completed H-1B applications. That explains why USCIS needed a second drawing. Still, overall science and technology occupations have been less negatively affected by the economic downturn due to the coronavirus pandemic. So what they're saying here is cases that were selected in the electronic filing uh, that was put in place for fiscal year 2021, what happens is, is that those cases are selectron selected electronically and then employers have to submit sort of the full petition um, is, is my understanding on what happened there and as to why they reopened the lottery back in August. Uh, the one thing that I wish this brief provided was the number of initial employment peti petitions filed and the same for continuing employment petitions. I'd like to see the overall number, just not percentages. And, and I know this can be easily found and it may be lazy on my part, but I feel like the overall analysis is slightly lacking without the total number of petitions. One thing that's been consistent with these briefs has been the recommendation to increase the number of H-1B visas issued annually, really citing the demand for it. That seems to be a growing sentiment. We talked about this on Friday, and not surprisingly, it's really coming from a lot of the pro-immigration researchers out there. However, there is a relatively large faction, including some organizations that are publicly calling for the suspension of H-1B visas to individuals from certain countries. It personally feels like this tension is only going to continue until a plan to clear the current employment-based green card backlog and move to a first-come, first-served system is implemented. Once that happens, then we can start talking about increasing the annual allotment of H-1B visas. Please, though, hear me on this. H-1Bs are not going to stop being issued, nor are country caps ever going to be put on H-1B visas. I do believe that we'll continue to see the overall denial rates decrease for both initial and continuing employment for H-1B visas over the next few years. What will be interesting to watch, though, is the number of H-1B visa employees that Big Tech will continue to employ. That number has grown significantly in the last five years. To read the full post on H-1B denial rates for Q4 fiscal year 2020, reviewing initial and continuing employment data for H-1B visas, please check out the h1bguy.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for the mailing list. A reminder that today's post is brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads since 2001. This national job board network provides recruitment websites in 1,024 major U.S. metro areas. Each local job board is its own portal and is a low-cost resource for immigration recruitment ads for all industries and professions with a flat price of $225 per ad regardless of which city you choose. RecruiterNetworks.com has been the number one place for immigration attorneys, immigration ad agencies, and employers to meet the DOL requirements for the digital portion of the PERM advertisement rules. RecruiterNetworks.com, tell them the H-1B guys sent you. Just wanna ask you again to please like this video, subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post new content to this channel or go live like we will this Thursday, February 18th at 9 p.m. Eastern for episode two of the Documented Dreamer series live. If you've made it this far, I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate your support. The H-1B guy, 
your global source for all things H1B.